Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to welcome you to the third session of this conference. Uh, my name is Goran Modenovic, uh, and I'll be chairing uh, this last session for today. According to the program, uh, in this session, two presentations will be given. Uh, the first one by Professor Christoph Butenweg, and the second one by Professor Slobodan Djordjevic. Professor Butenweg is a full professor for technical mechanics and structural engineering at uh, University of Aachen, University of Applied Science, general manager of the SDA engineering uh, Herzog Grant, and member of the executive board of the Center for Wind and Earthquake Engineering at, Univ at Aachen University. His research expert expertise is related to uh, complex problems in structural dynamics and earthquake engineering and computational structural mechanics. He will give us a brief insight into his work with the presentation named Integrated Approach for Monitoring and Management of Building with Digital Building Models and Modern Sensor Technologies. Professor Butenberg, please. So, first of all, Thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you that you are joining my lecture after the lunch. I hope it was not too heavy. Um, I would like to thank you first of all for the invitation. Uh, so it's really a honor to be here and um, I really like Belgrade. So just a few words, what is my relationship to the University of Belgrade? So it started in 2005 with, uh, with an exchange program which was called CFORM and uh, CFORM was a program to support young researchers after this uh, really difficult time after the war. And it was quite successful running out, um, I think, for almost 15 years. And uh, so especially in the last decade, um, so I strengthened my collaboration with the university with the supervision of uh, the PhD thesis of uh, uh, Mr. Marinkovic. And we are still collaborating and uh, we have projects together and I hope this will be also in the future the case. So, um, my presentation, I have to start my presentation, right? Yeah, just a moment. So my presentation is not uh, related, let's say, to my main focus. Um, I usually I'm working on structural dynamics and um, yeah, also uh, technical mechanics, uh, but um, we have to open our minds and therefore I'm uh, happy to present you an integrated approach for monitoring and management of buildings with digital building models and modern sensor technologies. So this uh, initiative uh, to start this uh, project uh, was uh, given by the German government because uh, we have uh, several industrial facilities and these industrial facilities uh, are located in seismic active regions. So they would like to have an instrument in order to uh, be sure that nothing is happening in case of uh, seismic events. And therefore this uh, project was setting up. So, first of all, I, um, I, I, uh, I will give you a short uh, overview into uh, building information modeling and uh, structural health monitoring. This is more or less the general part of my lecture. Um, then I will uh, show you the integrated approach. So, how can we integrate uh, structural monitoring in building information modeling? And then I will enter this uh, special project, uh, which is the basis of all this work. And uh, it is the project which uh, combines, let's say, the installation of these uh, systems in industrial facilities. And it is also a combination with uh, early warning and uh, rapid response uh, systems. It is an interdisciplinary project and it deals with uh, the combination of uh, seismological networks with uh, decentralized uh, sensor data. And uh, yeah, it will also uh, combine it with uh, SHM and BIM and uh, it is quite important to have also really good, let's say, data management and uh, these data acquisition uh, management uh, so that we are using cloud and web-based solutions. So in the end, I will try to summarize uh, the most important points and I have to point out that uh, this is an ongoing research project, so it's not finalized, um, but I will try to explain you the concepts and uh, 
the basic idea of uh, this work. So I will start with building information modeling and um, I think you are all aware that building information modeling is more or less introduced into the building practice. So what we can clearly see is uh, that we have a process. So building information modeling is not just a model, it is uh, mirroring the process of the design phase, planning phase, and then also the phase of construction. And uh, also afterwards, we have uh, to take care for the maintenance and operation of the building. So all the single, let's say, uh, steps are uh, supported by building information modeling. I would like to say that uh, at least for uh, Germany, uh, the focus is uh, so far more on the uh, planning phase, uh, construction phase and design phase. So it's not uh, uh, mainly related uh, to the operational phase of the building. But what I'm going to present is exactly this. So how can we, let's say, combine modern technologies with building information modeling? Because um, I personally think that uh, building information modeling contains a lot of uh, useful information and we should also make use of this information during the operation of the building and also facilities, special structures and so on. So once we have such a model, it would be a shame not to use it. So that is exactly, let's say, the point that I'm talking about and uh, the application will be to uh, industrial facilities. So on one hand, we have building information modeling. On the other hand, we have uh, several applications, sensor-based applications, and I'm not talking about uh, structural health monitoring only. So we have also several IoT applications which can be linked to uh, building information modeling. So what is the advantage? So what we can see here is just an example. It's sensor based. So we have several sensors, for example, sensors which uh, are monitoring the movement of persons uh, within the building. And we can derive uh, the distributions of the persons in the building. So that can be a quite important uh, information in case of emergencies due to fires or earthquakes or whatever. And then we can lead over this information, for example, to the fire brigades and they know what is the distribution of people within the building and we can also show the people within the building what is the best way to go out. This is just one example. There are several other applications. So if you are thinking about older people, they would like to stay at home and not to live in rest homes. So also there we have a lot of applications sensor based. So this is just, let's say, to, to show you that we have not only the usual way of uh, structural health monitoring, we can also think about, let's say, to intersect uh, different uh, information. The information that is available in building information modeling is a spatial uh, variation of uh, the building and this can be a, a benefit, let's say, to combine these uh, two information together. Of course, we have also these uh, structural health monitoring, which is usually subdivided in three phases. So the monitoring phase. So within the monitoring phase, we have to define the sensors. We have to install the sensors. Then one crucial point is always, uh, we need a really good data acquisition system. And once we have the data, we can go on with uh, the system identification, for example, if we are talking about uh, dynamic measurements, and we are able um, to uh, evaluate the condition of the structure during the lifespan, and this is quite important, this can also save money, because if I know the condition of uh, a building or a bridge or something like that, then I can also really plan uh, the measures that are necessary uh, to elongate the lifespan of this building. So typically uh, these SHM systems are applied so far to bridges and uh, usually we have also these SHM systems for wind turbines. But 
the point is that usually these SHM systems are not combined so far with building information modeling. So a typical example for an SHM system is structural health monitoring for bridges, as shown here. So usually strain gauges are installed and uh, accelerometers and velocities will be measured. And this information can be used and once the, yeah, once the behavior of the structure is changing, we can derive what was happening in the structure. It is not easy, but it is a way, let's say, to monitor the behavior over the time under the traffic and the traffic will also change with the time. So it's important, uh, let's say, to, to get this information of this uh, structure. I think it was also uh, presented before. So structural health monitoring and Internet of Things on one hand. So what is the common, let's say, kernel of these uh, two applications? Everything is sensor-based, so we have to handle sensor data and the sensors can be quite different. So we have sensors for structural monitoring, we have also sensors for other applications. On the other hand, we have building information modeling. Building information modeling allows us really, let's say, to, to study uh, the structure. We have all the information, three-dimensional. And we have a lot of further information on the building materials, on the, um, on the behavior, for example, um, uh, of the material characteristics, and if we are talking about buildings, energy efficiency, and so on. But the point is that so far, more or less, these SHM and IoT are standalone applications. On the other hand, we have building information modeling, which is more or less introduced, and the basic idea is we should combine both approaches in order to come up with a kind of standardized uh, database that can be used for uh, the operational uh, status of a building. So how can we do it? Um, so the basic idea is, at first of all, we have to introduce the sensors into the building information model. So this is not possible so far, but what we can do is we can take the IFC classes. These are the so-called industrial foundation classes. And uh, these industrial foundation classes allow us the representation, so the physical representation of uh, the uh, sensors in BIM. So, for example, if we have an acceleration sensor, we can check um, the behavior of the acceleration sensor and the description of the acceleration sensor and we can insert this data uh, to uh, building information modeling via the IFC class. So we have to create the IFC class and once the IFC class is created, we can add this IFC class to the building information modeling. So we can here see the red dots. These are just examples. So we are integrating the sensors into the model and each sensor will get an identity. So this can be a number, for example, and then we know, okay, sensor number one is an acceleration sensor with uh, certain properties. Furthermore, uh, we should take care that our definition of this IFC class uh, should be generally applicable. So for that reason, it is a kind of template class and we have to redefine it for each new sensor type. This can be done quite easy by using this uh, standard. So what we did so far is we defined uh, these uh, sensor classes, let's say, for our application. So this is more or less just the definition. So now the BIM model knows the sensors. But the next step is also important. Now, if we are going on site, we have to install the sensors in a physical way. Furthermore, we have to connect the sensors to our data acquisition system and we have to use the same identities in order to know, okay, this data belongs to the sensor for example, with the identity, identity number one in our building information modeling. 
So after evaluating the data, so if we have maybe intelligent sensors with uh, their own CPU, we can send results uh, to the uh, central database. So here we have two options. One option is a cloud-based solution. The other option is uh, to use a, a server-based solution. And then we are moving the data uh, to these databases. So here again, we have uh, different options. One option is to move the raw data, which is often uh, a little bit difficult because of uh, the amount of data, but it's also possible uh, to process the data and to send only some of the results to the um, data acquisition system that is uh, functioning in a centralized way. So it depends on the application, but usually some of the data are processed on the local data acquisition system. So then the next step is once we store the data that we would like to have for the end user and the end user is also not defined so far. So the end user can be the owner of the structure, can be the engineer. So we have different end users and therefore we have to be flexible uh, how to present the results. So that means uh, we need a visualization of the data and we have to map the data uh, to the building, uh, to the BIM model. So that means on different end user devices, we can map the data and visualize it. So here you see two visualizations. So the first one is you see the raw data. The second one is you see just a red sign, a green sign, just to say, okay, everything is okay, you, you do not have to do something, or it's necessary that you start with some measures. So this simple information is more or less than related, for example, to the owner or let's say to the uh, process engineers in a plant. So if we put everything together, then we have these steps. So we have to define the sensor types we have to define the sensor positions. In order to find the sensor positions, we are simulating the structure before, and then we will find the, the best positions in order to get the maximum information for our structure. Furthermore, we have to install the sensors. We have to choose uh, the data acquisition system and the way to, uh, um, yeah, to transfer the data. And here, some solutions are avail available um, from uh, uh, software firms. So it is not necessary to start from the scratch here. So then the monitoring phase starts. We can transfer the data. And then the new point is that we can visualize the data by using our three-dimensional building information model. And then we can also derive the measures that are necessary. But everything is integrated in one system and that is the difference. So it's not longer standalone, everything is combined. So this is the basic idea and we started with this basic idea um, with a project. So the project is a user-oriented earthquake early warning system that um, has to be installed in the lower Rhine Bay. So the lower Rhine Bay um, includes several uh, facilities and uh, these facilities are mostly chemical facilities uh, with a high risk uh, for the surrounding area and for the people that are living in this area. And uh, <clears throat> the project partners are uh, the Center of, for Wind and Earthquake Engineering. So this is more or less um, the basis uh, for the analysis of the structure. So then we have uh, the GFZ uh, from uh, Potsdam responsible for the seismic um, hazard, description of the seismic hazard. And then we need also uh, an expert for uh, communication. And uh, this is uh, the Fraunhofer Institute for Open Communication in Berlin. So the funding was given by the Ministry of uh, Education, Development and Research. It's a three years project, so um, we are still working on it. Furthermore, uh, we have uh, several uh, partners from industry, mostly uh, the chemical industry, so that means Bayer, BASF, Evonik, and uh, the, the other global players. 
So we had uh, long discussions with them and uh, their motivation, for example, is so the new facilities, they are all planned based on building information modeling because for them it is even more important as for usual buildings because you have several changes. So if the production process change, you have to adapt also the building information model. That is one aspect. The second aspect is they made really bad experiences in case of, uh, let's say, accidents. So it can happen if you have uh, a blast problem or problem with a seismic excitation, then you need a long time uh, to analyze the damage that occurred to your structure. So that was the motivation for them uh, to uh, support this project. And uh, also insurance companies uh, were interested because for them it's also quite important to know what could be the consequences and uh, so this is also important uh, for the companies um, uh, to get the contract from, uh, from the insurance companies. So what we choose is an industrial plant in the lower Rhine Bay. So it is a plant uh, close to uh, Knapsack. It's not so far from Cologne. I think you maybe know Cologne. It's between Cologne and Aachen. And uh, if you look from the top of uh, this industrial plant, you can clearly see that it's subdivided into infrastructures. So we have pipe bridges, we have production units, and we have a part for storage, tanks, silos, and so on. And this is, let's say, quite typical for such a plan. And the most important part for uh, our evaluation and for our development are the production units because the production units are quite complex and this can cause really uh, financial losses uh, to the industry if the production cannot run anymore. So what is the usual way? The usual way is uh, to carry out a probabilistic uh, design uh, for these production units then they are safe up to a certain level of seismicity, for example. Then you can calculate the structure and design the structure, and then it's done. If a seismic event is taking part with damage, you have to do a damage analysis based on fragility functions and so on. You have to do building inspections, so that can really take a long time. And according to the experience of the industrial partners, that can take between weeks and months. So if they have to shut down the production process for months, that happens, for example, after, in, uh, after earthquakes in Mexico City uh, to buyer, so that costs really a lot of money. So the interest is with such a system, with a combined system, really to reduce uh, the shutdown time and to save money. So here you can see uh, typical damages uh, to industrial facilities. So we have damages to structural elements, we have damages to pipes, and we have also damage to silos and tanks, which are, uh, let's say, called uh, storage. So it is quite complex because um, it is an interaction of different uh, yeah, elements. So here you can see a typical production unit and this production unit shows the complexity. So first of all, you have the structural system. Then you have several components. So the components are usually horizontal tanks, vertical tanks. Then we have also uh, some pipes connecting the tanks to each other and several other secondary elements like heaters and so on. So all these systems are somehow connected and um, we need, let's say, to, to mirror this structure in BIM. But that's already done because all layers are defined by the industrial partners in advance. So we can really take the model, make use of the model, and then we can uh, use the model for the definition of the sensor types and we can introduce the sensors into this model. So what are the challenges in, uh, yeah, in, in facilities. Um, so first of all, that's also my experience. I'm working more than 20 years on facilities. So they are changing. 
all the time, they are changing. So production process is changing. So tank A is moved from the basement to the top. Tank B is moved from the top to the basement, or you have new production lines. First of all, the same is happening if you need to add, let's say, additional modern techniques. And um, it's also um, um, the problem that you have highly specialized secondary elements which are quite sensitive. Furthermore, it is also uh, difficult, let's say, to do the Perth Ace earthquake damage assessment. So what are the potentials in this way to combine BIM and SHM? So if we have a BIM model, it's always updated, so we are always up to date. And if we have the link to the structural model, then the structural model is also always up to date. And this enables us to predict the damage in case of um, extraordinary events. Furthermore, um, it is also possible um, to, um, to connect uh, the result of the evaluation of damage to uh, shut down measures. And this is also an advantage and this advantage is, is also quite important. So the approach uh, is shown here. So the, the coupling of BIM and SHM was uh, already explained. So here it's one step further. We have also the coupling to a seismological network and to a common communication platform. And this communication platform sends the information on one hand to the process engineers and on the other hand uh, to the public. So we have, uh, from the government, we have uh, two uh, apps, which are called Nina and uh, Katwan. And Nina and Katwan can be installed by everyone. For example, during the flooding, you can see, okay, what is happening, what is going on? Uh, so can I use this street or not? So the same can be done, and it is already done in the surrounding of uh, these um, yeah, chemical industries. So the, <clears throat> the point is, uh, first of all, we have to define the seismic hazard in the region of interest. So you can clearly see it here. So we have seismic hazard maps. And in order to uh, tune our system and uh, to have already data available, we are simulating the earthquakes and we are uh, more or less um, uh, selecting the uh, best places for uh, uh, sensors uh, to monitor the earthquakes. So here I have to explain that uh, we have already uh, a seismological network, an existing one, uh, which, is, uh, um, which was installed uh, by the, geolo the Geological uh, Survey of uh, North Rhine-Westphalia. But there are just a few stations. Uh, so what we are doing now is um, we install further uh, seismic sensors. And these seismic sensors are really cheap in comparison to the ones that are existing. So it's a combination of a MEM sensor with uh, own CPU units. And the price is around 200 euros. So and we will install uh, several ones uh, in private houses, but also in each facility. So this sensor is able, let's say, to be connected to the existing seismological network. So what is the, uh, the advantage here? The advantage is if the earthquake is coming, we can predict the earthquake and we have a few seconds before the earthquake is um, reaching the facility. So that means in that moment when the network knows that the seismic event is coming, we can tell the sensors in the facility, and uh, these are the sensors installed within the facilities, please rise up your sampling rate in order to be ready and to analyze or to, to get the data which are produced during the seismic event. And this data are important for the evaluation. So this is more or less the connection between the seismological network and the new sensor types that we are going to install with the coupled SHM BIM approach. So here you can see the, the setup. So on one hand, we have this uh, seismological network with existing and new sensor data. And on the other hand, you see that we have the facility, which is, let's say, modeled in BIM. And we have also the information of uh, SHM 
and we exactly know what is going on in the facility before an event and after the event, we can really compare the data. So in order to, um, yeah, to analyze it more details, uh, we, uh, we started with uh, two models. So we used the scale test model, which was placed on a shaker system. We installed some um, uh, sensors on this uh, system in order to, yeah, to check the, the overall system. So that, is, uh, that was already done successfully. And in the next step, we are using the data uh, coming from a CERA project, which was a European Union project, and it was a test of a real-scale um, model of a part of a facility, which is also typically, so within the facilities, sometimes you have some three-story frames or four-story frames, and uh, so the data are completely available. Several sensors were installed, and we are now using this data in order to optimize the sensor positions and so on, so to train really uh, our approach. And this uh, test was carried out within the European Union project uh, together uh, with uh, uh, the University of Belgrade. It was completely planned also together with uh, Marco Marinkovic. So then we have the full test data and um, we can, um, let's say, define the positions of the sensors by using the simulation model. And then we can go through each step and we can see how does it work. So this is, let's say, under development. So the sensor integration is done, as I already explained it before. So we choose uh, specialized acceleration sensors, velocity sensors, and uh, we defined exactly the ones that were used in the experimental test. So then uh, we uh, defined the IFC classes, implemented it in the building information modeling, and now we are trying to optimize which sensors should be, let's say, transferred into our model. So the next uh, point is then the data acquisition system. So the plan is to install it on the real plant. So what we, uh, what we are, let's say, trying is to use um, um, a measurement um, processing unit also with, with an own CPU at site. Then the data are stored and then transferred, processed or as raw data uh, to uh, the central database. So in the next step, we have also simulation data. So the simulation data will help us to understand the system and we are doing several simulations in advance so that we have a data database. So if uh, a seismic event takes place, we can also compare it. So then we can check, okay, what, what is happening in case of this seismic event with this magnitude what is happening with our structure, and then we can deliver a first estimation of the, uh, damage, um, um, of the damage that will occur to the structure. So after a while, we can improve the information because that will take some time, and then we can really, let's say, provide information that can be distributed to uh, different uh, users, and we are using the protocol MQTT for that. Furthermore, of course, we have also to define damage indicators. So we have to rely on the owners of the facilities and um, we have to ask them for the components. So what is, for example, the threshold uh, for the acceleration of a specific component. But we can also use the typical ones like interstory drift for the structure and the period shift uh, of the structure. So we have to combine everything and uh, to do our best uh, to have uh, let's say, the best estimation of the damage distribution within the facility. So then the data integration. So this is the last step. So how can I provide the data to the end user? So this is more or less done uh, by using um, DSIDE BIM. So this is a system that allows us uh, to incorporate our own databases and at the same time to use a mobile phone and uh, to use, let's say, the three-dimensional representation of uh, the facility on any end device. So that is quite important because we think that 
the acceptance of uh, such a system depends also on the visualization on different end user devices. So the point is we have also to prepare this and as I told you at the beginning, we have to do it on different levels. So it's user oriented. So here you can see the calculation model of uh, the uh, uh, facility uh, under investigation. So I cannot show you the real um, uh, facility because that is not allowed for two reasons. So they are handling toxic substances and they are afraid of uh, uh, tourism uh, to, uh, attacks, first point. Second point is uh, that uh, the production uh, should be hided because this is a special production process and um, probably we can publish it together with them but so far it was not allowed. But that's what we are doing now and we started to uh, install the first sensors on site. Okay, so that was more or less uh, the project that um, I would like to present to you. Um, I think we as civil engineers, we have new chances uh, to cooperate with other disciplines. So we have our knowledge for structural analysis and we can also um, analyze the structure under different loading conditions. But we have also the option to use monitoring systems in future and we have to recognize that the usage is quite easy in future because the costs are dramatically decreasing so the sensor costs are more or less not not let's say the argument not to do it and uh, we are able to integrate the sensor systems in a better way in order to come up with a system that can be used by uh, by the owners of facilities, by the personnel that is controlling the processes, and it's also flexible, applicable to other structures. So in the same project, another group is working on uh, usual buildings and uh, bridges. Furthermore, um, it is somehow a, a long-term project because you are collecting data and all the time you are updating the structure and you are always aware of what is going on and what is the condition of the structure. So I'm really looking forward uh, to finalize this prototypical application and we will also leave all sensors there and we have the chance to monitor this uh, yeah, facility for the next years. Um, so it's completely uh, supported by the industrial partners. So at the end of my lecture, I would like to thank you and um, I would like to summarize also that it's quite important also, let's say, for my faculty to continue the collaboration and we need also to find the platforms for that because we need also some money for that. And uh, so I think that's what we maybe should discuss during the dinner. Uh, how to collaborate and what are the possibilities especially for incorporating young, young researchers. Okay, so thank you for your attention. Thank you for your, for your interesting presentation and uh, I mean this topic is really important uh, for this region because this region is, is probably more prone to earthquakes than Germany in general. Uh, but also, I hope that there will be, that we'll find some ways to col for collaboration in the future through some projects or other instruments. Um, I would like to open the floor for, for questions, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Butenburg, for a very interesting presentation. I'm coming from hydraulic division of our faculty and I must say that I'm happy to see that you are starting to build in a number of sensors into your structures in order to better monitor and simulate the behavior of structures. Uh, one question, uh, once when you install a number of sensors, you will be then stuck with a number of signals and your confidence in sensor operation will start lowering. 
Uh, do you think about some system that will do automatic validation of parameters to, to compensate for false alarms or something like that? And uh, another, let's see, not one, two questions. Another question is if you're using BIM to install the sensors or to know where they, they are installed, you are extracting from BIM the structure and you can create the model. So uh, have you found the problem of scaling up the data from BIM? BIM is too detailed. Inside you have too many details of structure, yep. each pipe, each line, drone, for yep. example. And in order to, to work with your data, you need scaled up model that can simulate certain behaviors of the structure. So how do you think to resolve those problems? Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> so I will start with the second question. Um, so I was talking about the BIM model, but um, so if, if I'm talking about the coupling of uh, BIM uh, with sensors, I'm not talking about the original BIM model. So there is one step. Uh, we have to transfer the BIM model to the structural model. And uh, what we did, we, we tried to do it automatically. So some of the software packages available on the market, they promised it, but I think it's not the case. So there is always engineering judgment needed. And especially for the facilities. So what we are doing is, um, for example, we are simulating the facilities not with all components. So then we have, let's say, uh, a model for, for the structure. Then we will get uh, the uh, floor acceleration and the floor acceleration is then applied to one component. So it's not that we have a, a really detailed model. So we have different levels. The first level, that's what I didn't explain. The first level is the following. So we are placing this seismological sensor, which has its own CPU and on this CPU, there is just a MDUF system, so it, it's quite fast to analyze it for getting the interstory drifts. Then you have the first idea. Second is to use the database that we are created. And it is not the case that we have a really detailed model uh, for each component. So this is not the case, and especially for the piping. So that's not possible. That's not possible. I think. Yeah, to have different levels of model is, is the best way. Um, so the, the first question, so regarding the, the sensors. So first of all, um, we have uh, in, the, in the phase of, let's say, the sensor design, uh, we have already an optimization and we are introducing some redundancy. So we say, okay, so we need 10 sensors, so we are on the safe side and let's place two or three more. So if we are talking about MEM sensors, so it is in the range of 100 euro. So that's not an investment for such a facility. So, so far we, we add a couple of sensors more to have redundancy. Any other question? Well, if there are no questions, I would like to thank you for his presentation.